I'm Josh Hibbert and I've just completed the 2019 Tour Divide. Um, as you can see, I'm just getting back into reality in a nice hotel room. Um, but I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you the bike that I used for the ride. So the bike is uh, it's based on a Mason in search of frame. So this is a steel frame, uh, Diodachi uh, custom tubing uh, with a Reynolds seat tube. Um, and it was kind of designed for events like this, long distance touring and long distance off-road um, bike packing races. Um, so as you can see, it's a drop bar bike. It's not really a mountain bike as such, but it runs two liner wheels um, and boost spacing. So there's loads of clearance around the tires. Um, and yeah, it works really well. So I ran a, a SRAM Force one by group set. Um, so I ran a 36 front ring, which in hindsight was probably a little bit too big towards the end. And then the standard 1142 uh, cassette and then I ran the brakes as well, but I used Shimano rotors because I feel like the, um, the ice rotors are a bit better on the, on the longer descents in terms of cooling. Uh, in terms of the cockpit, it was a Richie Ventura Maps drop bar. I mean, I've used these on quite a few bikes for a number of years and I really like them, so they're just my default bar. And then I also use these little Data Blast um, clip-on bars. Like, I didn't really want a full tri-bar setup because I think it just takes up too much kind of bar space and it's not really kind of I mean, you're not going to use it that much in, in the grand scheme of things, but they're there just to kind of be useful to strap stuff on and just tuck down on the flatter road sections. Um, saddle and tyres, they're by WTB, so it's the Hightail saddle, uh, which I, just works for me. Uh, obviously, saddles are very personal, but this one works. And I use the Nano tyres, which are 2.1, um, and they work pretty well. The rear one got fairly warm but there's still a little bit of tread on it but by the time I got towards the end it's dry and dusty and fast anyway so I like to think it sped me up a little bit. The wheels, um, these are a custom wheel set from Hunt Bike Wheels so it's based around the brand new um, carbon gravel X wide rim um, so I went, I didn't go for a full super wide mountain bike rim because of these 2.1 tyres on the wider rim it exposed too much sidewall and I didn't really want to have kind of the chance of, uh, of sidewall cuts so I wanted to try and reduce that so I went for a slightly narrower rim, um, and they're light as well. And I had them laced up onto the uh, XC, Hunt XC rear hub. Um, and then I've got a Son Dynamo uh, Boost Dynamo front hub here. Um, you may also notice that I've got this rather fetching fender on here. So this is actually um, two purposes. Uh, firstly, obviously it keeps a bit of mud out of your, your face. I was a bit sceptical beforehand, but actually it was really useful during the ride. Um, just little things add up and not getting sprayed with mud all the time and dust really helps. Also, it's got a two kilo low capacity. So when we get into the longer stretches of, uh, with no resupply or the hotter stretches, I could just buy a um, like just a bottle of water. This is a 1.5 bottle of water, litre bottle of water, and just strap it on the front there and that works really well. The rest of my water supply was on the fort legs here. Um, I actually managed to snap off one of the um, the bottle cages, I think I just must have knocked it and then you know the, the stutter bumps over time wore it out. But I carried these, these one litre bottles and put a bit of reflective tape on them and that's pretty much saw me through. And by the end I was carrying obviously the, the broken bottle cage bottle in my back pocket and then I carried an extra bottle of water when I needed to have four and a half litres capacity which, which worked quite fine for me. So it's worth noting that I didn't have any mechanicals whatsoever on this trip. Um, no punches, gears are still shifting fine at the end. All I did was change one set of brake pads at the front, um, which were only half worn, but I just wanted a bit more um, grip on the or positivity on the lever. Um, and I changed the chain. I actually took a couple of chains with me to start, and I swapped those out at 800 miles and 1800 miles, um, and that got me through to finish with zero problems whatsoever. Um, so yeah, really pleased with the setup. Obviously, there are changes I'd probably make doing it again. This is my rookie year, and uh, I learned a lot of lessons, um, but yeah, I think for a first go, it was a good bike setup. So the bags I used for this event, these are by Miss Great, which is an Italian bag, um, bag manufacturer. Um, so I had a full custom frame bag to fit this frame, um, and I'll run you through all the parts shortly. Um, then I used the top tube bag and the saddle pack, which is a 13 litre capacity. I think in hindsight, I'd probably go for a 20 litre next time, just so I, I had that space if I needed it. Um, and then I had a feed pouch here, which kind of had my, well, you can see what I've been eating, half melted, 
behind the bars. So uh, I'll check them in a bit. Um, so this is my view for the last two and a bit weeks, um, just under 17 days. So this is this is the cockpit area. This is this is what I've stared at most of the time. Um, so as you can see, I've used the uh, the Wahoo Element um, GPS, um, and I just had that clicked on there, and then I recharged it using a um, using the Dynamo. I was going to charge it off a cash battery, uh, but in the end, I just started doing it directly, and it seemed to work pretty well. So. Uh, so yeah, I just basically charged it in the morning and then ran it all day. And then just before it got dark, I made sure it was 100% to get me through the night and the early morning again while the light was running. Um, then I've got my, my trusty uh, Casio watch. Uh, that was my alarm clock. Um, I didn't sleep through too many alarms, but uh, yeah, I just trust these more than phones. Then my feed bag full of various bars, which I've obviously not eaten there because I was getting bored of them by the end. Um, and then this was pretty important. Obviously the tracker, which was just zip tied onto the uh, the bars here. Um, and then I had my notes that, um, these are available to download and they're just kind of mileage notes and tell you what's available. And I put my own kind of um, additional notes about, you know, what time shot, shuts, shops shut and uh, what was available, kind of, you know, subway or gas station or those things. And I found these really useful, especially kind of, as I don't know the course, it helped me kind of put into um, perspective how far I had to go and things like that. So they were always tucked under there. Um, going into the top tube bag, this this was kind of things I used you know, relatively regularly. So I had my lip salve, chapstick in the side there. My lips always get really dry and really cracked. Um, so I just kept on top of it and didn't have any lip problems this time because it can be quite painful. Uh, I, had, I had a bear whistle, which I never used because I never saw a bear. So that's kind of good, I suppose. And as you can see, I just stuff wrappers in here all the time and empty them when I can. Um, and then I had, again, never used it. I had the old Dyna plug that was just there. I put it in the netting at the side here because if you get a puncher, you want to get that sealed as soon as possible. And with this, you just grab it out and you can fix it straight away. Um, so also in the top two bag, I was filming this this uh, this ride. Um, so we've been making a kind of a bit of a documentary on it. There were a couple of camera guys out on course, and obviously a lot of controversy around the issue. Um, but a lot of it was done on GoPro. So I just had it in the top tube bag here, and I can whack that out pretty pretty easy and quickly just to you know, film some cool stuff when I was out by myself, which I must say was 99% of the time. Also in here, I had a quick like a USB adapter few spare GoPro batteries, um, cables, that's a spare cable, uh, like a light cable, various you know, for electronics. I had a spork with me, I just figured that you know sometimes it's really useful. Sometimes if the, if the option to have pasta or something is available, is it really works well for me as a fuel, but you need a spoon, so I thought well I might, might as well just take it. It's not going to cost me any weight or any time. Uh, what else have I got in here? Hand sanitizer. Kind of used for hands, but also other areas which might get very sweaty, i.e. the saddle area. So I applied that a few times a day. It did sting a little bit sometimes, but uh, I had no issues, so that's pretty good. And what else have I got? Uh, pseudo cram. I didn't really use it, but sometimes if you get a rash or something, you need some antiseptic, it's good just to put it on there. I think I used it for sunburn one day. Uh, and then my sunscreen. I use this Pelo's tan stuff, which is a roll-on. Seemed to work pretty well. Um, yeah, pretty easy to apply, and, and that was it really in there. So the the frame bag housed most of my kind of day-to-day -day clothing, uh, riding clothing. Um, so I'll give you a quick run through as to what I had. This is kind of as it is when I finished, so um, it's not that organised. So I started off with a gilet. This is just like a Hunt branded gilet, um, which I used to kind of just keep the chill off. Um, but I didn't use it too much. Um, my main my clothing sponsor is DHB and they got some really good kit so I, I basically stocked up with that. So I had a uh, this this uh, kind of windbreaker jacket, it's a race fit, it's real lightweight and um, I use this a lot, it was really cold at times and this really took the edge off the wind and gave me a bit of thermal insulation so that was invaluable. Um, I had a DHB lab rainproof jacket and windproof. I kind of I was lucky I didn't get too much actual rain riding, um, but it was really good just to take the edge off the wind, and it's quick and easy to put away, packs down small, so that was really fantastic. 
Um, and then I had arm and knee warmers. Obviously these were on and off all the time. Got a bit of a desert in there still. Um, so yeah, they were always on and off. Um, what else we got? I used these mitts. I wore gloves the whole time, as you can probably tell from my hands. Um, I don't think these ever got washed, but these were really good. I didn't really have any numbness at all on my hands. Um, maybe a little bit on the left hand side at times, um, but I just kept these on to make sure I, you know, could protect myself and they worked really, really well. So they're just, I think they're air on short finger mitts and they're probably seen better days now. Um, also, I kept food in here. So this was a burrito wrapper, must have been one of the last meals of the race. Um, some uh, slightly melted together blue shark candies. Didn't eat them. Um, oh, and a five hour energy. This stuff was, uh, I only started using it in the last few days. It made me a bit emotional. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, I also took a pair of these long finger gloves. They're not, they're kind of summer gloves, but they just take the edge off, the, the chill off the wind at times. Again, DHB, um, nice padding and stuff. They're really great. And then my final glove layer, they're from Descent 133. And these are a fully waterproof glove. I just chucked them over the top, either of the mitts or the DHB long finger gloves. And these kept me warm and it was kind of minus seven at times. I still had warm hands and I still had dry hands when it rained. So they were really excellent. Again, more burrito, uh, burrito wrappers. Uh, I had a hunt cap, which I never really wore. I'm kind of not really a cap guy, but it's, if you've got loads of rain, it's good just to keep, keep it off your face. So that was always there. As you can see, it's pretty battered. Um, what I did wear a lot, I've just got like an old buff. That was a headband, just to keep the, uh, the, warmth, the warmth in my head. Um, and also a buff around my neck. I use this a lot. Just the, the, the wind was so cold up high. Um, so that just kept some, some warmth in. That's a DHB one. Uh, and then I also took, Let's have a look. This is my rain gear. So I decided against taking rain pants as such, and I took these full length bib tights, uh, with a rain defense bib tights from DHB. I basically just nipped the chamois out so I could put them over my normal shorts. Um, and I just figured that they'd, they were waterproof um, and they're just a bit more thermal than uh, other, the other sort of brands and they don't flap around. I, did, I hate flappy kind of rain trousers that kind of rustle. So I put these on, they took a few more seconds to put on, but also it was when it was really cold, you had a bit more protection up your lower back. Um, so these were super good and I wore them a lot, given the cold conditions. And finally, uh, oh no, found another, Jesus, I had a lot of sweets with me. Twin Snakes Haribo, and, oh, and a protein, Special K protein bar. That's, that's all my food supplies. Um, I also took two pairs of shorts. Um, just keeping yourself clean and hygienic is just paramount. I've learned the hard way on that in long events. So my, the shorts I was wearing were these DHB Lab Ultralight shorts. I had two pairs. Um, I kind of run a couple of days on one set and then, you know, change and then wash them both if I got the opportunity. Um, and fresh socks. I took three pairs of socks. These have never been worn. So. Uh, I took one, pe one too many pairs of socks, but it, it's not going to slow me down. <clears throat> so that's the, the top part of the, the frame bag. Going into the lower part, this is basically spares and, uh, and tools. So it kind of kept all together. So I had this little bag with me, just a Cordora travel bag. It was really useful just on the plane over, just to be able to carry something. And also, I used it a couple of times, just in, when you go into a gas station and you know you're gonna stay in a hotel or something, you can just load it up and just sling it on your back and get to a hotel and sort your stuff out. And it weighs nothing, so it's not really gonna slow you down. Um, got my chain rag, which I used, you know, probably twice a day. Chain loop. Um, and then I've got tie lever. I've got my pump from Lazine, which I never used, which is a good thing. And I've wrapped some tape around it for emergencies, which again, I never used, which is a really good thing. Um, I took a spare bottle of Stan's tire sealant, again, never used, perfect. Um, I had some noon hydration tablets. I used a few of them, not many actually, but it's good to have them just in case. And then I had my tool sack, um, it's a Lazine one. 
So in here, I just had a range of things, so a multi-tool multi with a chain breaker on it, a little pot with normal tire patches, um, you know, glue, a few spare dynamo, um, connectors, a few spare nipples for wheels, that kind of thing. A trusty pen knife, it's got a couple of screwdrivers, obviously blades on it. That's been traveling with me for years, I've had it since I was a kid. It goes everywhere and it's really useful. I had, I've got one of these wolf tooth components uh, chain breakers. They're really good, quick link tool with extra quick links in there. As I was changing my chain, I just wanted to make the job really easy, and it was. Uh, I also had a reel of cotton, wax cotton and some normal cotton, just in case I needed to repair anything or stitch anything. Spare dropout for the, for the frame. Uh, my trusty little mini Leatherman. Again, this kind of, this is one of those tools that you never really need it, but when you need it, you really need it, so it's worth having. I didn't want to compromise on, on, uh, on tools. Um, Self-adhesive patches and some, some curved ne needles and brake pads. I took quite a few brake pads in hindsight, I probably didn't need to, but I'd rather have it than not and I don't want to rely on bike shops. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Just brake pads in there and another tire lever. And then finally, in the bottom here, just another little few bits. There's a uh, Spare Dyna plugs, again, I took quite a lot, I never used them, probably overkill, but I wanted to be safe. Um, spare cable, again, never used it. And what's this? Ah, oh, and a bit of a milk bottle. That was my emergency tyre boot in case I needed you know, to, to cover a large gash or something like that. And, and a bit of string, just in case. Um, and then in here, I just had a little bag and I had a couple of spare inner tubes. Um, so they were these super light ones. Fix kit and a tubalito inner tubes. Two of those, never used, perfect. And in addition to that, I also had a third inner tube there. Um, so I, I think probably in hindsight, I took too much stuff, but you can't be too, you can't be too safe on these things. So this is my Misgrape uh, saddle pack that I used. As I said before, it's 13 litres. Um, and stayed on the bike the whole time, I never took it off. Um, so on the back here I've got uh, a safety pizza. So I, I'm quite keen to have like a, a, a high-vis kind of pennant on the back nowadays, especially since Michael's death. I think making yourself visible is, is very important. Um, and this is one that's shaped like a pizza, so it made me laugh, so I got one. Uh, also on the top here I've got my waterproof socks. Um, they ended up on there after the last time I used them and I just left them there because I was shoving more food in my frame bag. Uh, these were good, they were warm, I slept in them sometimes, I used them when it was really cold. They were good hiking through snow uh, and also when it rains I could put, on, put these on, put on my waterproof um, tights over the top and it kind of gave a nice fully sealed uh, system. So yeah, they were good. Right, now inside here, this was my sleeping gear. Um, oh, I've got a base layer as well that's been shoved in there. So I wasn't wearing that at the end because it was the desert. Uh, I actually started with the DHB base layer, but unfortunately I strapped it on the back of my saddle pack on Whitefish Divide on like day two or three and lost it, so I had to buy another one in the shop. But um, yeah, this is a Merino, it's worked pretty good. Um, so yeah, so that's that. But the crux of the, the sleeping kit, um, I decided not to go for a sleeping bag as such. I decided to split into down trousers and down um, jacket. I used a synthetic down as well, so if it got wet, then it didn't really matter, it'd be easier to dry and you know having a wet down trousers rather than a whole wet sleeping bag is a lot easier to sort out. So I use this Patagonia, I think it's Micro Puff, it's, it's the like, latest stuff so I thought that was a sound investment. That jacket was sound, really good, I even wore it on the bike quite a lot, um, I slept in it, I wore it casually, you know I kept, flew out in it, I've been using it since, really good piece of kit. Um, and I also managed to find Patagonia Nano Puff down trousers. These are actually designed to fit under fishing waders, so they're designed to be able to sort of, you know, handle a bit of moisture. And I thought these would be perfect for sleeping in, and they were. You know, they got a bit of um, reinforcement on the back, so I could ride in them. And I did end up riding in them, especially for the basin. It was like minus seven one day when we started, so I had all my clothes on. And the great thing about this system was that I could wake up and I'd be quite cold and I could just wrap up my bivvy bag and ride with my down gear on and it 
you know, within 10, 20 minutes it'd be quite warm. And then you could strip off and kind of get, get into it and you know, get running in the cycling gear. <coughs> Now my sleeping setup, I didn't actually baby out that much in the end. I was not really that strong-minded about sleeping in hedges this time, which probably cost me a lot of time in hindsight. Basically, I wrap everything up inside the bivy bag. So it's a wrap bivy bag, and I rolled it out, and then I had a Thermarest Nano Air three-quarter roll mat. I think recovery is key on these events, so my thing was recover well and the nights where I bivied and got really cold I had really bad days the next day um, so I think in hindsight I had an even sort of more robust sleeping setup in future events um, and then inside here I just had a silk, silk sleeping bag liner just to kind of get inside in my in my down kit and um, you know it was pretty warm I slept in pretty cold conditions and I wasn't ever too cold uh, so on the, the left hand side of my frame pack there's obviously like a little uh, little compartment um, this is where I kind of kept um, important stuff and you know electronics that were kind of flattish. So what I've got in here, I've got um, well a bag of toilet roll, very important I'd say. Um, had my phone. To be honest, I barely used it. Um, it was turned off, off on aircraft mode most of the time. Took a few photos, uh, checked the tracker a few times, and listened to music off it. Um, then I had my I had my cute all my cue sheets inside there and also the profile just to kind of help myself um, get acquainted with it and it's printed on waterproof paper and that worked pretty well. Um, then I had my wallet, um, some multivitamins which I didn't really take in the end. Um, I had a kind of basic first aid kit, um, you know, chlorine tablets and antihistamines and diarrhea stuff and basic dressings and antiseptic wipes. Thankfully I never used that. Uh, what else have we got? So I took a battery pack, um, 10,000 milliamps. Um, I was hoping, well I was planning to charge this off the dyno and then charge all my gadgets, but I ended up doing it directly mostly. So I used it to charge my phone a few times. Um, in hindsight I'd probably take a smaller one, but you know, you live and learn. This is the, the cable to charge my devices, including the Wahoo. Um, and I used this Simov reactor, which is wired into the dynamo. Um, so I just plugged that in there and then plugged it into the back of the Wahoo. You can use a 90 degree cable and that worked really well actually. Uh, what else did I have? I had a spare Wahoo. Um, I mean they're pretty reliable. Um, the only problem was sometimes if they get too hot they freeze. So I, I'm kind of glad I took a second one but I use this for maybe like an hour max out the whole ride. Um, and then I have some Dyrolite sachets. Just good to kind of keep the, the salts in when you need them. Um, an exposure joystick, which I used, well, as soon as it was dark I clipped it in my helmet and then I used this if I needed to stop or find food or, you know, was, wasn't using the dynamo. Um, and then obviously passport and essential documents. And then right at the bottom, a few spare spokes and some cable ties, which again, I never use. So yeah, that's pretty much the, uh, the setup there. Um, the other thing was the lighting. So I used an exposure Revo light here, um, and it had a red eye wired in, and then also a spare rear light, which didn't rely on dynamo. Um, so yeah, they were really reliable. So that's pretty much the setup for the Tour Divide.